Don't watch me. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> right, hi guys. So today, welcome to a beautiful sunny day on the River Mersey. So I'm halfway down the Mersey between Stockport and Liverpool, just outside Warrington. And today I'm going to be looking at some concrete boats. Yes, concrete barges. Um, I know, that's what I thought. I mean, I thought I've, I've heard about these years ago and it always baffled me how can barges be made out of concrete. Many of you will probably know about them already and be like, yeah, that's totally normal, Ollie, what are you on about? But for me, it was just like concrete barges, garlic bread. Uh, so yes, today I'm going to be looking at them. Problem is, they're tucked away in a corner off the water's edge, but not the River Mersey, the Manchester Ship Canal, which is over yonder. Um, so, I thought what a better way to get there than by boat. <laughs> right, so this is the beautiful uh, vessel which is going to take me up the river onto the Ship Canal to see these boats. But, you notice, there's another boat over here and another kind gentleman. This, you'll probably recognise him, this is Lewis. Um, he's a local legend on YouTube. Well, an international legend actually, because <laughs> uh, um, people all over the world watch your videos, don't you? Yeah, you said that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Lewis has kindly um, agreed to chaperone me up the, uh, the, the river today, and I'm well excited. We're both proper excited yeah, about this. Yeah, we are. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Um, so yeah, if you don't know Lewis, you probably do know Lewis. What's your channel called, Lewis? It's called Ringway Manchester. Sweet. And what kind of things do you cover? Uh, it's mainly radio, but like sort of history of sort of old military sites and nice. radio sites, radar sites, it, just all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's really good as well. Even if you're not into the radio stuff, you're not into the CB radio stuff, the history, the little mini history documentaries he does, just brilliant. Like, I'm really interested in them. They're just really, really good. Thanks. I didn't pay him to say that either, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a bonus. Um, so yeah, um, you're a bit of ready for an adventure? Yeah, I really am. Sweet, let's get in let's there. Get in. Let's get our feet wet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so let me show you where we are and where we're going to go. So we started off here, just outside Warrington, and you can see the Mersey wiggling its way through here. Now we're going to be kayaking up river for about a mile and a half, and then we'll come to the Manchester Ship Canal, where we'll head downstream to here. Now this is where the concrete barges are from uh, World War II. So on paper, this looks like a nice little adventure, doesn't it? Now the River Mersey around here was naturally a little bit mad. It meanders all over the place. But to make it more palatable for shipping in the 19th century, they made a few shortcuts here and there. Today there's a new cutting for one of the loops directly across, and they've cleverly used a weir here for a hydroelectric power plant. And I think it's a Czech company that installed it. It's only little, but every little energy is better than just wasting all this raw natural power. You can see Lewis speeding away up there. He's got a single kayak. I've got this double, this massive double thing and I'm floating down river again. It's like driving a tank and he's just zipping off up there, no care in the world. Out. Taking his time, do what you're playing on his phone. I'm putting a sweat on. You ever seen a film called Deliverance? Hey! You ever seen a film called Deliverance? It's not worth this. more water in the boat than's in the river at the moment. Um, so that noise you can hear in the background is um, the Thelwall uh, viaduct and um, it's actually two, vi two viaducts side by side carrying the M6 north to south, south to north and it crosses 
the Mersey here and the ship canal just over there so um yeah so each bridge uh, sorry each viaduct is almost a mile in length and uh, when they they were built in 1963 or when they were opened in 1963 they were the longest motorway bridges in britain um so that's quite interesting it's getting really noisy i'm not even there yet i'll swing around that's how far away i am uh so yeah uh it's going to be slow going today, this. Lewis has gone, by the way. He's gone, he's had enough. He's probably seen these concrete barges and gone to the pub already. Lewis! Where are you? There he is. So apparently in 2005, they discovered that at this one, the northbound bridge, that a single bearing had failed. And so they had to close one lane of the, the bridge, causing massive disruption. Um, and they ended up replacing about 130 bearings altogether, which cost five million quid and took almost three years. So three years, one lane up there was closed. All because of one bearing. But then again, what are you gonna do? It's a bridge. It costs what it costs. Do you know what I mean? What are you gonna do, send it back? Noisy under here, like. There's Lewis all there, just chilling out. Having the day of his life. Oh, he's lying down now, look at that. Caught you. I've come up to something now which um, looks like an old bridge or possibly a landing stage or something. I reckon it's an old bridge, it goes right across the river um, to the island over there. So, yeah, let's get a close look at that. Now, what I keep calling an island is in fact Wollstone Eyes, a lump of land between the Mersey and the Ship Canal. Today, it's where dredgings from the Ship Canal are deposited, hence the access bridge we passed earlier. But it's also a site of special scientific interest because it's become a haven for rare native birds, butterflies, amphibians, and reptiles. Was it just like a little pond, a little fishing pond? Just goes, yeah, it's just like a little pond full of weeds or something. Cool. Now you can't really tell from the water, but we've come to a really straight bit in the river at the moment. And this is the Butchersfield Canal, which again was cut to avoid a stretch of river that wiggled mad south and then north again, coming almost to the same point. Now also on this old map, you can see this long straight canal here. This is the Ship Canal, of course. And you can see where that cut across the course of the old river and that riverbed is now all but dry. Right, so this um, cool looking concrete bridge connects the island over there to, well, the mainland I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think it's a bit of an access road for whatever's on the island. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see where the old bridge used to be. You can see the footprint of the old bridge, an old wooden bridge. Um, Lewis reckons there's some infrared sensors just up there. Is that what they are, Lewis? Look like, yeah. What would they be for? Probably detect boats from underneath, but I don't know why. Hmm. Detecting boats going underneath. It just seems weird that there's, there's, there's one in this, there's one in this arch one, there's one in the next, and the next. All right. Like speed, speed traps.
Right, so just come to the point now where the, the Mersey meets the ship canal, um, which is this big open uh, straight canal which goes for miles. Uh, you're not supposed to be kayaking down here to be honest. Um, because ships still use it and it's dangerous. Uh, but you know, look both ways before crossing your eyes and all that. Right, so as you can see on the edge of the canal here, there's lots of the, the old wooden um, where the landing stages used to be for the ships coming down the canal. And just on the Mersey, we've passed um, going down the Mersey a little bit. Um, so, yeah, nice bit of evidence of what this canal used to be in terms of an industrial canal. And you can see right down the canal here, back towards the, the viaduct down there, the motorway viaduct. It's just so straight. In fact, you can see beyond that, it might not come out on camera, but the old um, railway bridge uh, down at. Um, Latchford, which I did a video on once, um, and that's bloody miles away. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I never thought I'd be doing this. from the uh, landing stages as well there's loads of it um, yeah it's just amazing to see how busy the ship canal used to be and how uh, how not it is today like I am kayaking down the Manchester ship canal right now not a boat in sight um, so yeah ah, look at this I think we made it I think we made it here now you can see something coming up Right, so yeah, here we are. A concrete barge, everybody. That's actual concrete. Let's try and get a bit closer. Um, but it's huge as well. I didn't think it'd be that big. I've seen them online, but I, I just didn't imagine them to be this massive. Right, so yeah, actual concrete. Um, some bolts sticking out there. It's not entirely concrete. There's timber on it as well. Um, I'm sure there's an iron or a steel frame under there as well. With the, for the um, the concrete itself, but yeah, let's go. Uh, let's see if we can get out and have a look inside. <laughs> so I think I've actually got out of the water on one of the boats. Um, so it's full of silt and mud. But if I walk down here, you can see. I mean, you can see now. There's the the side of the boat. Um, that's all wood though. It's not concrete. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely 100% about that. But yeah, this one has sunk at the front so this one at the front isn't one of the concrete ones this is obviously wood and it's sunken right down so there's three more well three concrete ones are that way and one of them here so uh, yeah I might have to go on dry land and have a walk around to see them Right, so here we are, so I bravely stepped on top of one of these concrete boats. You can see just the, the, the size of the thing, it's massive. And you can see the other two there, there's one and one further back. They're just huge and they're still afloat, that's the thing. I mean, they're full of water, it's like pea soup in there, but they're still afloat and they're massive. So look, concrete there, concrete there. It's just a vast concrete boat. Um, Right, so you can see from here, down there is the Manchester Ship Canal. And this is an old uh, bit of the River Mersey. The River Mersey 
has been obliterated around here and it's all dry apart from this bit of the riverbed he's still still got water in it um, and this is where these boats have been dumped and it's just absolutely wonderful to be standing on one for a start but just to see I mean one two three just huge Right, so here we go. You can see them from here beautifully. So these were made in uh, during World War II when steel was in short supply and concrete wasn't. And, and so the physics works out the same as if they were made out of wood or steel or anything. It's about water displacement at the end of the day if something floats. So why not? Concrete boats. Um, and they were used on the ship canal, this part of the ship canal, um, for lightage, for basically moving goods from one ship to another and therefore speeding up the turnaround of the ships on the canal um, so yeah moving goods from one to another really very basic job very basic boats just a massive uh, storage space in the middle there um, and then after the war they had no scrap value because they're made of concrete and there's very little metal actually involved um, so they were just kind of dumped here on this dead arm of the, uh, the old river mersey And it is weird to see something like this it survived, what, 80 years or whatever? Um, but why not? Why not? And they'll probably survive another 80. They're slowly sinking. But they're going to be around a long time, I think, these guys. And this here is the tiller, look at that. It's bloody huge, it's heavy as well. Imagine tilling a concrete boat along the ship canal. The feeling of power, the raw power you must have. So there you go, that's the end of the video. Now we were in a bit of a rush to get back to the start and let me tell you, rowing upstream on the Manchester ship canal and into the wind is not a lot of fun. So by the time we made it back to the start, we were so tired, we actually forgot to record an ending to the video. So anyway, thanks for joining us both and I'll see you in the next one.